Hello, my name is Dr. Dennis Sacuso. I'm a professor emeritus of psychology at San Diego State University. I've been um, spending my life studying, studying how to learn uh, memory. And what I'm going to do in a brief series is show you an approach to studying and learning that is going to be the fastest and the most effective that you'll ever see. And uh, what I need to do is introduce you to certain concepts. I won't take that long and I'll have a couple of parts here but I want you familiar with certain terms and concepts and I want you to think about them because you do have to work at it if you want this to, to learn this super learning super memory system. Okay, first thing is why do we forget? And so I want to expose you to the basic theories of learning and I'm going to do it very quickly. The first theory of why we forget is based on this old concept that when you remember something, when you learn something, it sets up a trace in the brain. And that with time or with interference, perhaps this trace decays. And so that's one important theory. And just keep in your head that when you do form a memory trace, unless it's consolidated, you'll lose it. And um, quite often you're going to need sleep to consolidate memories. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. One way to keep the traces alive would be through repetition. I'm going to talk about repetition and its limits in just a bit. And if you are repeating, uh, don't repeat it a thousand times at once. Just basically use distributed practice. So if you learn something new and you think about it and think about it, over time, that's distributed practice, it's going to stick. Uh, a second reason why we forget is called interference, interference theory. It turns out what we already know can interfere with new learning and also once we learn something, then learning something new can interfere with what we just learned. So that's called uh, retroactive interference. We have This tells us, interference theory tells us that when we study something, if we want to hold on to it, we want to reduce interference, either either go to sleep, that's probably the best, or if you have to study something else or learn something else, try to make it as dissimilar as possible to what you've just learned so as to minimize interference. Now a third important theory is called levels of processing. In the levels of processing theory, the whole idea is um, it's the way we process the information that's going to determine how well we remember and can recall it. So for example, they distinguish between shallow processing and deep processing. Shallow processing means you're just learning something by sound or by rote. And obviously you can see if you learn it by rote or sound, you're not going to hold on to it. In deep processing, you think about it and you relate it to your current body of knowledge you practice with it, you use it. They use the term elaborative rehearsal, which means when you learn something new, you can elaborate on it. You don't merely recall it or call it back, but you elaborate on it. You think about it. How does it apply? How does it pertain to you? That's distinguished from maintenance rehearsal. In maintenance rehearsal, we simply say the term or word or what we just learned again and again and again. Maintenance rehearsal does not work very well unless you just need to maintain the memory or the learning for a very brief time. Otherwise, you're going to need elaborative rehearsal. Now, cueing is another very important part to understanding this approach that I'm going to be telling you about. In, in queuing, what we try to do is, is get a cue for something. So if, if I gave you a long list of animals, uh, or maybe I gave you a list of animals and birds, and um, it would be much easier to remember this if you had a cue called animals and another cue called birds. Many, many, many studies where, where psychologists provide a cue or don't provide a cue. And consistently, there is a substantial difference in favor of the people to get the cue in terms of the amount that they recall. So what this is going to mean is you want to try to get labels for the things you want to remember. Uh, and I'm going to talk a lot more about that as well. Now finally, a uh, big, big important concept. And that's the idea of encoding retrieval relationships. 
And very recently in psychology, the whole idea was it's not really a problem of recalling something, that the whole problem is putting it in properly. And that's what we call encoding. When you encode it, you take something from the outside world and you transform it into a form that your brain can actually use and store. So when we talk about how you encode, we talk about the way that you put it in your head. And there are some very powerful ways to put it in your head. The main ways would be organizing and condensing, which you see up there. Now, when we organize, it's very, very important to organize. What we try to do is put it in a way that makes more sense. We try to group things together. Turns out that this will multiply your ability to remember and, to, and the speed with which you learn as well. And you don't even need a perfect organization. So they did a study, and in the study, uh, psychologists gave an ideal organization. They, they put material words in, in an ideal organization. And of course, that was better than no organization at all. Much, much better. However, they asked the subjects, college students, to try to organize it themselves. And it turns out that when the college students organize themselves, that their own personal or subjective organization was just as effective as a psychologist's ideal organization. So it's very, very important to organize. These are the main theories of forgetting. It's pretty exhaustive. I've covered it quickly, but I need to have you start thinking about these concepts so that we can push on. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to talk about some of the specific learning techniques that have been floating around the literature recently. And then I'm going to go into the procedure that you can use to learn very quickly, to actually expand your mind, uh, grow your brain, believe it or not. And, um, and, and as I said, it's, it's going to be very effective. If you're in school at any level and you use these techniques, you can up your grades dramatically.